tonight I'm going to show you how I take star trails from the back of my garden due to the Kira's virus um, and the lockdown. We can't go anywhere unfortunately. Uh, so no it's glamorous tonight but the lesson is still going to apply. How I use the settings um, and uh, the equipment I use is exactly the same no matter where I was. So hopefully this will help some of you aspiring astrophotographers out. Uh, I'm only going to use three pieces of equipment for this. Uh, which I'm going to touch for in a, in a moment. Uh, but first of all, please do subscribe to my channel to get some um, to see all my new contents. Click that notification bell to be notified when I do upload a new video. Please do give me a thumbs up um, to like this channel, and of course, please leave any comments, questions you may have, and I'll answer as many as I can as quickly as I possibly can. First of all, though, before we do jump over to lesson, here's a quick preview of some of the other um, star photography and astrophotography and night photography that I've done uh, in the past. Um, and at the end of the video, I will put a, a little portfolio together um, showing all styles of photography that I also do as well. And please do check out some of my other videos, which I will link some of them um, that I think would be really useful to those who are interested in this sort of um, astrophotography, uh, long exposure type type of photography, uh, including waterfall photography, towards the end of the video. But without further ado, let's jump over to it. See you in a moment. Thank you for staying along with myself. Hopefully you did like some of the images that I've shown uh, so far regarding astrophotography, night photography, long exposure type photography. Okay, without further ado, let's jump over the lesson. But as I said earlier today, uh, please do make sure you do subscribe and tick that notification bell so you're notified of future content. Right, in terms of the lesson then, okay, there's a few, three things that you basically need. You need any DSLR, pretty much any modern day DSLR now where you can use manual settings, you're going to need that. You also need a tripod, okay, and you need some sort of remote triggering system, such as one of these, okay. This is the um, shoot, you can get it on Amazon. Um, it's a timing remote, basically, okay, and uh, effectively, the reason why you want to use one of these rather than pushing your control um, shutter button on the camera is you don't want to cause camera shake. Okay, because obviously you'll get slightly blurry images and that's what you don't want. So by connecting one of these, you're not touching your camera and you can set this on a timer. Okay, typically you want to be shooting uh, between 2 to 20 seconds exposure potentially. Okay, uh, and then you can set this uh, to do so. Okay, you can also set this to do the number of shots you want so you're not having to keep coming back to the camera. Uh, I typically will set mine at 399 and then I'll stop it when I want, want to. But typically you want to be looking at around 100, 150 images um, to then stack together in post to create that one star trail photography side of things. You can also do time-lapse photography as well using this same co uh, concept as well. And you've basically got a start and a stop button. So once you've programmed all the settings you've got in here, um, then you can simply um, push start, walk away, sit around, do whatever you want to do for half an hour, 45 minutes an hour, whatever the amount of time you want to spend taking a shot, click stop, it's all done, and then you can go and take uh, the images put in post, okay? Um, as a rule of thumb, you potentially, you effectively want to have um, probably about 2 to 20 seconds um, long exposure per shot, uh, as I mentioned and again um, around 150 images is, is about right particularly if you want to do your time lapse photography you want to list that sort of time okay in terms of the camera settings that you want to put into the camera uh, is I always drop my shutter speed down to the bulb setting okay um, most DSLR cameras will have that setting you just need to check that if it doesn't have a bulb setting go down to the lowest you possibly can um, and you might need to just adjust uh, your ISO instead, okay? And the reason for that is it will let more light into the camera and that's why it's very important not to have any camera shake because uh, otherwise with the bulb setting it's literally 
so sensitive, the slightest movement can affect it as well. It's also very imperative you have a very good uh, tripod. Any tripod will do to start you off with, but if you have a really sturdy tripod and you've got a bit of wind, it's not creating that little camera shake as well. Yeah? Okay. Now, in terms of the other settings on your camera, um, is typically I'll go to um, the lowest f-stop I can, can go, so with the, cam the lens I'm using, which is a 35mm prime lens, it goes to 1.8, so I will shoot with that typically. Okay, uh, and then you adjust your ISO typically around 100 to 200 where possible. Okay, to get your shots now, depending on how dark it is, how much light pollution there is in the area you're shooting, you can adjust all of those settings to, to suit yourself. So, I would always recommend just doing three or four shot tests to ascertain um, if you need to make any adjustments. Now, in terms of things like white balance. I normally shoot on an auto white balance for most of my photography and then adjust it in post. But for star photography, change it to daylight setting. Yeah? And then when you're focusing, you focus on the brightest star in the scene that you're going to shoot. Okay? So you need to zoom into that star um, and make sure that the star is round. Okay? Because certain apertures and things like that will mean that um, it can distort the star and you want it to be as round as possible as you possibly can um, and then you can zoom out and you've got it all set you also need to focus on that star okay and then take it out of autofocus afterwards because you don't want the camera to try and zoom it um, to focus differently once you've zoomed out and you've got it all set up okay um, other than that you're pretty much ready to go and start shooting you right? know okay um, and if you've got a really nice scene like an old building, something like that, you can do some light painting with that. And the way you want to do that is you do all your star photography first, then you refocus, keeping the camera in the same position, of course, you don't want to change the position a bit, but you refocus the focal point to the building, okay, and you take a couple of shots, put some lights around to light up the building, take a couple of shots, um, lighting the building and exposing it correctly and then you can merge those into, into the photos as well. Now as a side tip for yourself, okay, is obviously at night you're going to get a lot more noise than you would normally during the day. Now a little tip for this is simply put your lens cap on your camera, take a few, a few shots um, with the lens cap and basically you use those blank or black uh, imaging if you will, okay, and then when you merge those in with the other photo uh, photos it will basically reduce the amount of noise you get from it as well, so you just insert them at various points during the stacking process and it should reduce that noise for you, for, for you there, yourself there as well, so that's another little tip, it takes a little bit of practice to know how many number you, have, how many you need, so it depends on how many images you, you stack in, you, you know, a good 10-15 is good, um, if you're doing a lot of images, like 200 odd images, you might need 50 or more. Um, so, of course, again, you just need to play around with that. Okay. Without further ado, let's nip outside and, uh, and we'll, we'll touch base then again. All right. See you in a minute. Bye bye. Okay, so we're outside now. Uh, I've got this all set ready for me, so I'm just going to talk you through it. Uh, you're not going to be able to see on the back of this, I'm just going to talk you through it. So, we've got a delay option, so I've got that set have a, a two second delay okay um, I've got long at 20 seconds and intervals at 5 okay and uh, number of shots I've got 399 I'm not going to use 399 because I'm not going to be out here for that length of time but to give you an idea that's that's how we're going to work it out uh, I'm literally just going to shoot across my garden Welcome back, I've just been outside taking some photos. I've actually just focused on just the stars in the sky. There's nothing else in the image besides that for the sake of this tutorial, purely because I've got nothing glamorous um, to put in the foreground to photograph. Even in my back garden, there's not a lot there other than uh, my son's swing set and a gu outside guinea pig run for when it's nice and warm to put the guinea pigs out there. So there's nothing really great to put in the foreground, so I stayed clear of that. Okay, um, as a result of it, I've only been out for about 20-25 minutes or so. Normally you want to be out there for about 45 minutes to an hour and a half or more. Um, because the longer you're out there, the more movement you see the stars moving. And thus, 
uh, the better effect you get. As always, I'm sure you're aware of this already, it's not actually the stars that are moving, it's the rotation of the Earth. If you want that to stop so you're not doing star trails, for example, you want to take photos of, say, the Milky Way, um, one, obviously, you need to go to, a, to um, at least light pollution areas possible, where I am, middle of the town, um, it's quite well um, lit for uh, Nottingham in the UK, um, so you want to move somewhere more um, remote, if you will, for um, that sort of thing. But for this, it should show you what you needed to, need it to do. You'll see some trails on there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to editing and I'm going to show you me myself going through what I do with each of the images in Lightrooms and then I'll put that in a separate program which I'll touch base with you uh, later on how to merge those together in one uh, sitting. There's a particular really good program to do that and I'll explain that to you in a short while. So please stay with us and uh, we'll jump to the next part of the lesson. See you in a minute. Cheers. Okay, so now I've got the images into Lightroom. So I'm going to show you how I uh, bring up more of the star than you can actually see and how I edit the images. And then I'll copy and paste those onto all the other images. So I won't show every single image because it's just going to be a copy and paste. So first of all, I get the contrast over here on the right-hand side. I'm going to whack that right up, as you can see. You'll be able to see more stars there. Blacks, bring that right down. Bring the shadows out a little bit, reduce the highlights, and then we're going to go down to clarity. As you can see, if I move that, you can see more of the stars coming out. Like to get vibrant a little, bit, a little bit up there, reduce the noise a little bit. And that's pretty much all you need to do. There's a bit of light pollution here. And um, then I'll copy and paste that over to all the other images. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to put them all into star stacks and um, how it all merges together to create the star trails. So I'll see you in a minute. Good morning, and today I'm going to show you how to put all your star photos into star tracks and um, change them from individual images to star trails. Uh, so you need a good number of images, say around 60, 70 or more, ideally 100, 150 is, is best. Um, from this one, because of the canary virus and the lockdown, couldn't go anywhere glamorous, so I've got about 77-ish images um, I did from the back garden, uh, just focusing just purely on the sky. So here we go. So we're opening up Star Trek. So it's S T A R S T A with a capital X, um, and it is a free program. It only processes JPEG uh, images. So once you've processed all your uh, images in Lightroom, save them as JPEGs, and then you can pop them into into uh, to this program. So this is how it works. So we click here to open the file. You find you all your files, so this is where I've got all my files. So I'll control all of them, pop them all in. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see, these are all the images here. Okay. And then you've got a few options. So I'm using gap filling. So what it will do is it'll take from image to image where the star appears to to have moved and it will fill in the gap creating the tail. I always click on comment mode. I've always put the longest tails because then it stretches them out longer uh, and creates the, the effect for yourself. Okay, you can subtra subtract dark images etc if you need to. Uh, I'm not bothering on this on this occasion and uh, all you do is you click on process, start process. Okay. okay. Click on process and it's going to start blending together. You'll be able to see the preview here and you'll start to see it all merging together. So I'll let you see that forming and then I'll stop here and then show you the end result once it's all done. So 
So I'm going to jump to the end result and show you what uh, how it looks like, and I'll see you in a moment. Bye.